The definition of grief, according to Merriam-Webster, is a deep and poignant distress caused by or as if by bereavement. A loss of a loved one, a loss of humanity, a loss of childhood. If I were able to see grief as a being, it would be a nasty creature with snarling fangs and a thirst for blood. A childhood such as mine would be looked at through pictures in an album and be praised, but those are pictures with a novel behind each one. My innocence swept away at the age of six and my brother murdered soon after. My father battled this being of grief, walking tight ropes in the pitch black darkness of his mind. He walked those tight ropes until his legs began to fail and his shoulders began to slump. I keep a photo of my father in my wallet to remind myself that there is something more than emptiness in the world. My mother's sobriety was nowhere to be found during this time, however, my two older sisters were there as stone pillars holding up what seemed like the world. Even so, loneliness is a burden that comes with such grief. Maybe finding the bottom of a bottle was better than finding that everyone you have ever loved was gone. I oftentimes wonder if my father's unwillingness to love and be loved is hereditary, and I fear that one day my genes will rise up against me. My loss of innocence was held behind bars in the caverns of my head, a secret, our little secret. I had started questioning whether the events ever happened and to question your own recollection of harrowing events that were so personal is a deep and frightening feeling. Perhaps this is the reason why I flinch at the touch of someone who cares, the reason why I do not feel worthy or capable of love. But I am here today to become worthy of love. I'm worth it. You are worth it. We are all capable of loving ourselves. And the scars that I know some of us have, the people who we have lost, the innocence we all once had shows that we have loved and we have loved hard. The definition of grief, according to me, is a domesticated animal that often lays in bed with you on your days off or sits with you as you drink coffee in your favorite diner. We have learned to live with this animal and it has learned to live with us. No longer does it loom over us and no longer does it chain us in our homes. My counselor once told me, Levi, there are two things in life we are all guaranteed, paying taxes and dying. I laughed and I said, she said, why grieve the ones we love before they're even gone? And I said, if I stay alone and distance myself, I can't be hurt again. A quote from my favorite book states, to make yourself feel nothing so as to not feel anything. What a waste. I have tried and I have failed. I have loved and I have hated. I have lived and in a metaphorical sense, I have died. But there is one thing that drives us all. Each and every one of us here is, to, is here to find something more, to find that we are more than what we think and to find some missing piece of the puzzle that was stolen long ago. But I think that we are the missing pieces of the puzzle that is humankind. The wonderfully morphed pieces that fit anywhere they can manage. But as we come together, we may find that each of us beautifully damaged fit together to create a more elaborate puzzle. One that knows no boundaries and knows no hatred. And that is what binds us. <laughs>